Welcome back to Open Line, everybody. It's News Literacy Week, and we are devoting all week here at News Channel 5 to educating news consumers about what is credible news content. My guest tonight is our chief investigative reporter. We're talking about the work that goes into our investigative reports, and it's the extensive work that goes into it. I'm going to read two questions that we've gotten. We're on Facebook. We're, we're on all kinds of formats. I'm going to read two questions. Then I'm going to start taking calls, Phil. There were a lot of people pointing fingers at Capitol riot suspects. How did you know when to report their names? Was it when they were arrested? Yeah, and, and we actually wrestled with that because um, social media sleuths had, uh, had identified uh, Eric Munchell uh, as being the so-called zip tie guy. Um, and, and you know, based on what people had turned up, I mean, we were 95% sure that they were right, uh, but we had not had a chance to reach out to him and to give him a chance to respond. And so we just sort of held our fire until he was arrested. Uh, if we'd been able to reach him and, and, and our producer actually went out to his house to try to uh, get confirmation. Uh, but you know, the last thing we want to do is to find someone who looks like the, the, a Capitol riot suspect and, and name that person without giving them a chance to respond. Uh, and, and so we actually did not uh, do a story naming that person until he had been had been arrested. Yes, until they're arrested. Okay. One other quick question. Then, then I'm going to start taking phone calls. And, and we were watching, we actually had spent a, a day or so watching his house, uh, and um, and you know to see if we we could see him coming in or out to try to give him a chance to respond. What do you do when an elected official or official spokesperson says on social media that what you reported is not true? You know, I, I, I think we have uh, a, a responsibility to, to be as transparent as possible. Uh, and, and so actually, I, I sort of like it when, when they go on social media and say it's not true because uh, that gives me a chance to respond right there on social media and say, no, it's true. Here, here's a screenshot of the document that we got this from. Uh, so I, whenever that happens to me, I, I become very engaged uh, because uh, I want viewers to know that you know we have the ammunition behind our story, and uh, and and I'm more than happy to respond on social media. It's, it's sort of like the Clint Eastwood line: "Go ahead and make my day." Well, uh, and I like so. the I like the part in the story that that. We aired at six o'clock where you said you had been, again, working on it for months. You've been sending the state, okay, here's my idea of the story. Is it accurate? The state would send it back and, and you had this dialogue going. So if then after the story airs, they want to come back and say something's not right, you do have ammunition. You know, that's part of, again, a credible report that has spent a lot of time uh, working on it, that you can come back with ammunition. Right. Uh, b because you know again part of our job is if you're going to report on someone allegations of misspending allegations of corruption whatever it you know it may be the final step in that uh, it is to give the person a chance to respond because there have been times that i think that i understand the situation i reach out to the subject and, and they say, no, no, you, you misunderstood something. And we have walked, you know, I think all of us probably, have walked away from stories that we thought were stories, but upon you know, further testing of you know, the, the hypotheses, you know, we, we realize, okay, it's not what we thought it was. And, and so we may sometimes spend days or even weeks working on a story that never makes it to the air. Because That's exactly in right. the end, if we're not confident with the story, if if even perhaps the subject has a a worthy explanation, we'll walk away from that story rather than putting it on the air. That's why it's so important to get their side, and why a tough question can be um, it can be a good thing for for people sometimes. Just just tell us what's going on, and sometimes it does shed light on things, and and, and you do have to you walk away from the story. 
Um, I tell people and, I'm proud of the stories I've done. I'm proud of the stories that I haven't done, that I haven't felt the need to force a story. Um, you know, that the station here does give us time to work on it. And if it's not there, we don't have to do it. Right, exactly. And, and that's happened so many times. Uh, and, and that's the reason, you know, sometimes people will see us uh, approaching public, offici public officials, especially uh, on the street or coming in and out of a committee meeting and, you know, putting a microphone in the person's face. And the reason that happens is that we may have tried to get answers to our questions, our, our you know, inquiries were ignored, and we felt like we have to make one last effort to say, you know, here's what we're reporting, what's your response? I want viewers to know that I did everything I could to give the person a chance to respond. Absolutely. All right, let's go to let's go to some calls. Ann. Hello, Ann. Uh, hi, yes. Go uh, right ahead. I'd like to thank you for doing this show. I can remember the first time I did my first protest on the courthouse steps in nineteen seventy eight. And through the years I learned to rely on Larry Britton for regular, consistent, reliable news. And Channel 5 has had consistent, reliable news. I've learned to be able to trust Bill Williams to continue to give reliable, factual news. I can't do that with our pre previous president and what came out of the White House. But I knew when I heard Bill Williams was doing an investigative piece, I was going to get the truth. And in this day and age, that is something that we don't get to have anymore. And I just wanted to say thank you because I have been around since 1978 and I've seen Channel 5 expand and I know that it, I'm not alone in wanting to thank you for your reliability because that is scarce these days and we do appreciate everything you do All right. you put your stories together. Well, Anne, thank so you. That's what I wanted to say. Well, there, Anne wanted to thank you. She go, she remembers Larry Britton, Street Talk. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Anne, so much. That, that, that means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's. I'm gonna. We have so many calls. I'm just gonna keep going. Uh, Phil, a different Phil. Phil, are you there? Hello, Phil. You may not know. I'm gonna go to Mark. Hello, Mark. Yes, I'm go, here. Go right ahead. All right, thank you. Um, enjoying, enjoying this and learning so much. But one of the things that, that I had a question about in this process is I, I like the fact that you showed the, the group of, of how you guys put the show together. And I've always known that was the case in one sense, but it's been wonderful. And over the years, having watched uh, investigations and follow through, I, I think sometimes uh, even as much as I like all of you guys and I love your work, occasionally you will aggravate me. And I think that means you're doing a good job. Um, and I always think that the truth will stand at the end. But the question I have, do you ever get pressure from from a corporate point of view, from your from the guys big up, up on top? Do they come and say, you, you know, y'all need to really put some more pressure here or there? And, and I think the things that you guys develop and investigate, that makes sense. But do you feel a lot of pressure from other places? I'll answer first, then I'll let Phil answer. Um, I, I like that we did show that meeting. Um, and I have not I have not had pressure from above. Uh, maybe somebody will say, why don't you look into this? But there's never, um, you need to look into this or else. And I've never had them kill a story. I have done some stories that, um, I know cost the station some money on some, I guess, I, I don't know, should I say, some, some, some stuff that was in the legislature and some bills with um, payday lending. <laughs> so I, I, they've let me do those stories, and I, I admire the station for that. Um, and, and so there is not this corporate sort of entity that oversees what we do and, and guides us. Um, I do want people to understand that. That group you saw on Zoom, we're the ones that talk it through. 
Um, that would be my answer. Phil, what, what do you say? Yeah, and, and, and I have one investigation uh, in particular that I, I remember. It, it cost the station a million dollars, one million dollars. And, you know, management, you know, stood behind me because it was a, a major advertiser who pulled um, advertising for a significant amount of time so that it would be a one million dollar hit to, to the station. But management felt it was an important story and, you know, felt that, you know, we we have nothing if we don't have our credibility. Uh, and so, you know, we never got any pressure over that story. And, and, and I, th I think that says a lot to a million dollars. A million dollars. I think management um, does understand that we have nothing if we don't have our credibility. And that's why we are just kind of off on our own. That group you saw, that Zoom meeting, now of course it's not, it hadn't been on Zoom except since March. Normally we just kind of meet here at the station. But we are kind of our own, our own group. And um, that's, that's been a good thing. All right, we're going to take a break and we'll start taking more calls. Lucy, Rick, others, uh, hold on the line. Be back right after this.